Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Nick. This week I take this dirty, dingy old hand plane that didn't even work and I restore it to better than new condition. If you want to see how I did it, stick around. The plane started out pretty dirty and dingy, so I just kind of examined it and started taking it apart. You can see here I had all the parts and pieces laid out nicely so that I wasn't going to lose anything. I then headed over to the belt sander with the lever cap, just trying to remove most of the surface rust. You can actually see the lever cap itself is actually pretty smooth. It didn't take very long to get most of the rust removed. As for the sides, typically when you're dealing with a belt sander with a cylinder like this on the end or the drum, it's kind of hard to get into some of these internal curves without having flat spots. A trick that I've been using over the last few years is if you run the belt off the back of the sander itself, it acts as more of like a balloon inflated drum sander and it conforms to some of the curves without actually leaving any flat spots or lines. It actually does a pretty decent job. Is this a safe thing that you should do? I have no idea. It's probably no more dangerous than using a table saw. I could then move on to sandblasting. I had the frog sitting there and I figured it was heavy enough to sandblast but that's when it started moving. I call this the frog dance. The main body of the plane also didn't have enough weight to it. So I just clamped it to a brick to keep it from moving. Sandblasting went relatively quickly. There was a couple little spots left and I, and I ran out of media. So I just cleaned those up with a wire brush. But for the most part, it got right down to bare metal and it was nice and ready for paint. On the bottom of the sole, there's a tab that hangs off that also needed to get painted where the handle attaches to. I went with a semi-gloss black paint. I didn't bother masking off some of the areas because I was going to polish them later. Another nice little trick if you're trying to smooth and polish screw heads, chuck it up into a drill and then you can run it through either a hand sander or belt sander, take off most of the rust. With it still in the chuck of the drill, then you can take it over to your polishing wheel and give it a nice high gloss finish. I then continued working on the lever cap, hand sanding it all the way up to about, I think it was 800 grit. This takes a long time. I suppose if I didn't spend so much time on the phone, it would have went quicker, but either way. Once it's all nice and hand sanded and smooth, you can take it over to the polishing wheel and go ahead and polish, polish, and polish, and polish some more. But if you take your time, you do your prep nice, this is what you can end up with. It was almost a mere finish. All I did for the brass was I just hand sanded it lightly and then brought it over to the polishing wheel and the before and after is quite stunning. Brass really does polish up nicely. Then with some cheap diamond stones, I just cleaned up the sides of the plane and then brought it over to the buffing wheel and polished, polished, and polished some more. You don't need to bring it up to such a high polish, but I figured it would look nice. Another thing to note is I didn't polish the actual sole of the plane itself. Polishing can sometimes make the surface a little bit on the wavy side and that and I didn't flatten the sole of the plane until later on after I had everything put together. I then could move on to the plane iron. I got most of the rust removed from just a wire wheel over on the grinder. It actually did a pretty decent job in getting the rust out of all the crevices. I then turned my attention to sharpening the iron, first by flattening the back. I then could basically work myself through the grits and make sure the back was nice and flat. Then I attached the honing guide and did the same thing, eventually restoring the 30 degree bevel that was originally on the iron. And then just for fun I ran it past some 1500 grit wet dry sandpaper. By the time this iron was all said and done, it was razor sharp. Then switching gears a little bit back to the woodworking portion, my handle itself had a chunk missing out of the top. So I took my marker and I traced around and then just drew in the portion that was missing. With this portion complete, I just cut it out with a knife and then I could prepare my wood. I made sure to cut enough wood for both the handle and the knob. Then I resawed it to the appropriate thickness, drew on my pattern, and then cut it out, leaving the line. Once on the oscillating spindle sander, I could then sand up to the line. Using a half inch round over bit in the router, I started by taking light passes. Small pieces like this, I like to use a hand screw clamp to hold the workpiece. Also, where I'm going to be exiting the wood, I always like to have a sacrificial block clamped into place to avoid tear out. Not too bad for just coming off the router. 
Then back to that oscillating spindle sander to clean up some of the burn marks and to smooth things all out. I checked it every so often to make sure it was comfortable in my hand. But that's not too bad, considering I haven't even done any hand sanding yet. As for the hole in the handle to mount it to the actual plane, I needed to find the angle. I found a screwdriver that fit the opening nicely, then I could take my bevel gauge and match that angle precisely, bring that over to my drill press, and set my drill press table accordingly. With a Forstner bit just the size of those brass nuts in place, I could then drill the counter bores and then switch to a regular twist bit and drill some through holes. Here's the handle after all the hand sanding had been done. I then sprayed on approximately 10 coats of satin lacquer, waiting about 15 to 20 minutes in between each coat. I then could take the blank that I was going to use for my knob and cut out most of the major corners and get it as cylindrical as possible over on the bandsaw. Then I could take it to my vertical lathe machine, also known as a drill press, and start to rough out the knob. If you want to know how to turn your drill press into a lathe, make sure to check episode 26 where I show how to make a salt and pepper shaker on the drill press. Once I got it to close enough shape, then it was just a matter of running through the different grits of sandpaper and then giving it the same 10 coats of lacquer finish. Then I had all my polished pieces all laid out and ready to go and I started assembling it. The frog screws into place with just two screws, a couple washers and a couple split washers. The front knob can then be screwed into place using the brass hardware I polished earlier. I could then insert the screw into the frog that holds the blade and chip breaker. Attach the chip breaker to the plain iron itself. Install the back handle, making sure it's nice and tight. A little tip here when dealing with brass hardware, try and find the most appropriate size screwdriver you can use. If you use a small one and you're cranking down on it, often you're going to mar that brass. It's rather soft. With the iron in place, I could then install the lever cap, checking to make sure I had a nice snug fit when I engaged the lever. If not, release the lever, Tighten the screw slightly and recheck it. And there it was all assembled. And at this point, I did the final flattening of the sole. I started out with 220 grit wet dry sandpaper, made sure that it was nice and smooth, and then worked my way up through the grits. I think I finished out on about a 6 or an 800 stone. And here are some close up pictures of it all said and done. So what did you guys think? This thing turned out amazing. I think it's better than brand new. I'm going to get years and years of use out of this thing, and I'm just, I'm absolutely happier than, than can be. I went into it cautiously optimistic, because you never know. I mean, you could have some really deep pitting in areas, and you might have some parts that are seized up that need to be taken out, but, you know, I, like I said, I could not be happier with this thing. I might upgrade to a different plane iron in the future for a, a more modern metal that would hold an edge a little bit longer, but so far this one is suiting me just fine. How does it work? I thought you'd never ask. Like butter, this thing cuts amazing. It just glides through the wood like it's not even there. The bottom is nice and flat and it just does a really good job making some nice small shavings. If this is your first time here, I'd encourage you to hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. And if you like the video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button or share it on your favorite social media. That definitely helps a lot. Well, until I see you guys next time, take care.